platform. You are all welcome to Better Faith e-learning platform. My name is Mr. Benjamin Obi. I'm here this morning to take the subject mathematics of primary three and basic three. And the topic for today is plain shape. Our topic for today is plain shape. Under this topic, we have symmetry of plain shape. Symmetry of plain shape. We will talk about plain shape. I believe most of you have been hearing of the word plain shape. So, plain shapes are shapes that have flat surface and do not have thickness or depth. Plain shapes are shapes that have flat surface and do not have thickness or depth. Examples of plain shapes. We have some of the plain shapes that we considering this morning. We have we'll be considering square as one of the plain shape, rectangle, triangle, and circle. These are some of the plain shapes that we'll be studying this morning. We're we'll putting them into consideration this morning. So I would like to start with a square. This looking at the board will have the diagram of a square. This is the diagram of a square. When we talk about a square, a square is a polygon with four sides. When we talk about a square, a square is a plane shape with four sides or a polygon with four sides and all the four sides are equal. We we'll have, this is the diagram of a square, A, B, C, D. Length A, length A, B is equal to length B, C. And length B, C is equal to length C, D. And length C, D is also equal to length A, D. When we talk about a square, all the four sides are what? Equal. It's a polygon that has four sides. And all the four sides are equal. So this morning we'll be considering some of the characteristics or properties of a square. How can you identify a square? Or how can you recognize a square if you see that particular shape? So we're we'll considering properties of a square. Under the properties of a square, we'll have one that it has four equal sides. Two. It has four equal edges, which are 90 degrees each. If you look at the edges of this square, this represents 90 degrees. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. If you sum up all the 90 degrees, you will get the sum of 360 degrees. It has four edges, uh, which are what? 90 degrees. That is, this edge is 90 degrees. This edge is also what? 90 degrees. This edge is 90 degrees, and this edge is 90 degrees. If you sum all the total angles, it will give you what? 360 degrees. And it also has lines of symmetry. Well, we'll talk about lines of symmetry. It has four lines of symmetry. A square has what? Well, four lines of symmetry. You might be asked in your exams that how many lines of symmetry do a square? How many line of symmetry do a square have? So a square has four lines of symmetry. How can you get the four lines of symmetry? This is the diagram of a square. This is the first line of symmetry. The second line of symmetry the third line of symmetry, and the fourth line of symmetry. So, a square has four lines of symmetry. You can see the lines of symmetry on the board. This is the first line of symmetry, the second line, the third line, and the fourth line. So, a square has four lines of symmetry. Under this square, we also have a formula we use in calculating area of a square. And what is the formula we use in calculating area of a square? Area of a square is something as length times length. We are using the formula length times length because a square has just length and all the sides are what equal. So if you want to find 
the area of a square, you simply apply this formula. Area of a square is equal to length times length. So area of a square is also the same thing as length squared. That is length times length. And the unit is always in a unit uh, square. That is what did I mean by unit square? If the side is given to the word a centimeter, the area, the, the unit will be what? Centimeter square. If it is in meter, it will be what? Meter square. Is that taken? Then, in a, right now, in a square, if this side is 4 centimeter, if this side is given as 4 centimeter, it simply means all the side will be what? 4 centimeter. If one side or one side is given to the word 4 cm, it means the other side, the remaining three sides is also what 4 cm each. Is that taken? Then a square also have what? We can also calculate the perimeter of a square. If you want to calculate the perimeter, what do you understand by the perimeter? It simply means the total, the addition of all the sides. Is the total addition of all the sides in a given shape or in a given figure. So if you want to calculate the perimeter of a square, it's also the same thing as length plus length plus length plus length. You add the four lengths, to add them together, giving us perimeter is also the same thing as four lengths. So in a particular question, if one side is given and we are asked to find the perimeter of that square. What you are expected to do is that you go by this formula, perimeter is equal to perimeter is equal to 4 times length. You just use 4 to multiply one the given size, one of the given lengths. You will get the perimeter of that particular square. Is that taken? Then the second place shape that we considering this morning is a rectangle. This is the diagram of a rectangle. And I believe almost everybody in this class is familiar with the word rectangle. You can hear the word rectangle and you can even identify the shape of a rectangle. So rectangle is also what? A plain shape. So a rectangle is a polygon with four sides. Rectangle is a polygon with what? Four sides. But in a rectangle, all the four sides are not what is equal. So in a rectangle, we have length, breadth, length, and breadth. So rectangle is that polygon that has two lengths and two breadths. You can see the length, the first length, the top, the one at the top, and the bottom, the one at the bottom. So the two sides are what they are equal. In a rectangle, this side, the two sides, the two given lengths, the two sides, the rectangle has what two lengths, and the two lengths are what equal. That is, if here is given to be what four centimeter, this side to be what four centimeter. In this side, and a rectangle also has two breadths. In a rectangle, a rectangle has two lengths and two breadths. Rectangle has two lengths and two breadths and the two lengths are equal likewise the two breadths are also what equal if this side is given to be what three centimeter that means this side to be what three centimeter that is under the properties of a rectangle we also study that it has four sides and two equal sides that is length a Length AB is equal to length BC. Length AB is equal to length BC. Likewise, length AB is equal to length CD. Length AB is equal to length CD. And length AC is also equal to length BD. If this side is 4 cm, this side too will be what? Given to be what? 4 cm. So it has 4 sides and 2.
In a rectangle, the four angles are equal in magnitude. That is, this side is a 90 degree. 90 degree. Remember that angles are measured in degree. 90 degree and 90 degree. So, it also has two lines of symmetry. What did I mean by it has two lines of symmetry? This is a diagram of a rectangle. This is the diagram of a rectangle. This is the diagram of a rectangle. This is the first line of symmetry, and this is the second line of symmetry. So, a rectangle has two lines of symmetry. A rectangle has two lines of symmetry. And a rectangle has its own formula. You want to find the area of a rectangle. Area of a rectangle can be calculated by what? Using the formula length times what? The breadth. This is the length and this is what? The breadth. So if you want to find the area of a rectangle, you can go by this formula. Area of a rectangle is equal to what? Length times breadth. And you can also be asked to find the perimeter of a rectangle. So if you want to find the perimeter of a rectangle, the perimeter of a rectangle is a length plus length plus breadth plus breadth. So perimeter is something as length plus length will give us two lengths. Plus breadth plus breadth will give us two breadths. So we also have P is equal to, you look for the common terms. 2 is common between the length and the breadth, so you bring out the 2 outside. Open a bracket, length plus breadth. So, we we'll apply this formula. This is the formula we used in calculating perimeter of a rectangle. 2 open bracket, length plus breadth. 2 open bracket, length plus breadth. If you apply this formula correctly, you'll be able to get the perimeter of a given, if we're able to calculate the perimeter of a given rectangle. So the perimeter of a given rectangle is uh, given as, uh, the formula is given as two open brackets, length plus breadth, or you apply the, this, the first formula, length plus length plus breadth plus breadth, whichever one you use, please show me to get the same answer. If you apply the two formula, you can still get the same answer. So, the third play shape that we considering this morning is a triangle. And I believe most of you are familiar with the word triangle. When we talk about a triangle, a triangle is a play shape, is a polygon with what? Three sides. And remember we have different types of triangle. We have the equilateral triangle, the isosceles triangle and the scalar triangle. So this, we considering these three types of triangle this morning. We considering them. We will be studying them this morning. So, and a triangle may have three lines of symmetry, or one line of symmetry, or no line. Let me start with a equilateral triangle. What are the types of a triangle? When we talk about the equilateral triangle, a equilateral triangle is this type of triangle. It's that type of triangle that has three sides, and the three sides are what equal. And even the angles are what also what equal. So, what are the properties of a equilateral triangle? It has three equal sides, and three equal sides in length. That is, length A B is equal to length A C, and length. AC is equal to length BC. Remember the word equilateral. Equilateral simply means the three sides of this triangle. They are what equal. That is, if this side is three centimeter, this side will be what three centimeter, and this side will be what three centimeter. In equilateral triangle, the three sides are equal. It also has three lines of symmetry. Equilateral triangle has three lines. Of symmetry. This is the first line of symmetry, the second line of symmetry, and the third line of symmetry. So, a equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry. 
it also has three equal angles that is the internal angle if this angle is 60 this angle to be what 60 and this angle will also be what 60 remember the sum of all the angles in the triangle will give us the sum of 180 degrees so each angle is 60 60 60 giving us the sum of 300 giving us the sum of 180 degrees then the second type of triangle we'll be considering is the an isosceles triangle. When we talk about an isosceles triangle, an isosceles triangle is a type of triangle that has a, is a triangle that the two sides, the type of triangle in which the two sides are equal. The two sides are equal. Properties of an isosceles triangle. It has three sides, but two sides are well equal, that is. AC is equal to A is equal to C A B C. AC is equal to B C. These two sides are what equal. Simply means if this side is two centimeter, this side will be what two centimeter. These two sides are what equal. Likewise, it has one line of symmetry. Let us consider this as an example. Just one line of symmetry. This is just one line. A socialist and triangle has one line of symmetry. And angle A, this angle, angle A is equal in magnitude to angle B. That is, if this angle is 60 degrees, this angle to be what 60 degrees. The two angles are what equal. Then the third type of a triangle we're considering is the silent triangle. We'll talk about the scalar triangle. So one of the properties of a tri scalar triangle is that it has three unequal sides. The three sides are not equal. None of the sides, the three sides are what not equal. And it has no line of symmetry. Remember I earlier said that uh, a triangle may have three lines of symmetry, one line of symmetry, or no line of symmetry. Then we also consider what side when we talk about the cycle. A cycle is a round shape. A round shape of a round shape. We have a round shape of tire, the globe, ring, it is they all have what the shape of a cycle. Talk about the cycle. We also can talk about the circumference of a cycle. We'll talk about the circumference of a cycle. It is the curve lines that makes the whole cycle. We'll talk about the circumference. It is this curve line that makes the whole cycle. They also have diameter of a cycle. It is a straight line. This is the diameter of a cycle. This line that passes a straight line from the circumference passing through the center of the other side of a circumference. So, this is the diameter of a cycle and this is a radius of a cycle. And the formula for calculating circumference of a cycle is to either use pi d or 2 pi r. So we can use this formula to calculate the circumference of a cycle. Then we we'll have some of the practice exercise on the board. Let me read some of the practice exercise. We we'll have you are expected to answer this practice exercise on your own, and you are also expected to study the loop very well. Measure three properties of a side square, b rectangle, c isosceles triangle and D, equilateral triangle. So we are expected to measure the properties of these plane shapes. Thank you and God bless you.